Again, guys, I do this every week uh, at Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is for non-members, a glimpse into what we do, how we utilize MIC, how we operate. Uh, for members, this is a chance for them to learn our platform, guys who just signed up. Um, everything from, I'm gonna take down, you know, I'm gonna show you guys the website today. I'm gonna show you guys the video library, how to access it. Uh, our proprietary trading strategies exclusive to MIC. How to start trading in general. Um, you know, how to back test things like that. Our Slack platform, which is this right here. Let me show you guys, uh, which we'll go into detail. And then uh, how to contact us, you know, and just how to kind of maneuver in and out of everybody at MIC who our team is, everything like that. So let me introduce you to the team simultaneously to the left and uh, on the website on the right. So obviously the guy talking in front of you is uh, D Bradley 90. So my, my real name is Tosh Bradley. Um, you know, I've been trading for six, seven years now. I can't remember the exact start date, but it was way before the, the whole tries debacle in like, what was that, 2016 or 17? Uh, which was Alex's claim to fame, right? So obviously, you know the two legends, of course. Let me show you guys, though, who is also a part of our team, which, you know, at MIC, when we created this community, guys, you know, not only were we like, how do we do what we would have wanted to see when we were new again, right? It's like, you know, we've been trading for a long time, so we're kind of numb to it, you know? We're numb to wins, we're numb to losses, you know, we've got a process that we refine daily. But it was like, God, if we were new, what would we want to see if, if it was our first day trading or if we didn't know what supply and demand was or float rotation or very, very simple things that just, you know, the difference between knowing and not knowing can save you a lot of headache and a lot of heartache and a lot of money spent or, or you know, wasted on a learning curve that you just didn't have. So we're here to cut your learning curve down. Um, our team, guys, let me run through these guys real quick. First off, we have Aloha Trader. His real name's Austin. He's a long and short bias trader based in Hawaii, of all places. Uh, next, we have Chicago Trader. His real name is Matt. Matt and Joe Kelly, who's our other head moderator, uh, they put together a weekly Sunday video series, and Joe focuses on Excel spreadsheets, you know, data tracking, how to basically, um, you know, just technical side of trading while Matt likes to focus on the fundamental side and, you know, why offerings happen, uh, shelf restrictions, all these kind of things in the SEC filings that you can find on, you know, Edgar um, or BAM SEC. Next, guys, we have Oliver Tan. If you guys are interested in hats, mugs, anything here on the website, you know, memorabilia, check out our shop. It's really cool. Next, we have El Duterino, who created our MIC secretary, which is actually, let me show you right now, if you scroll all the way up to the new member channel, in chat, this is our chat room, uh, you'll see this, and it's a bot. It's an application that not only posts downloadable content, it posts links for you guys. It will literally tell when a stock will either halt or not, you know, so if like, if Fran is trading, you know, F-R-A-N, which it was today, and say it halts, right? MIC secretary is literally gonna let you know this. So it's kind of like a guiding hand uh, as we kind of maneuver each day. It's, it's full of so much cool stuff, but he's our coder and uh, just making fantastic things every single day. Uh, next, guys, we have Sam Hajal. He's a young trader, around 21, and he's actually New Jersey-based, who, uh, you know, he lives right next to Alex, so they kind of do some MIC back-end work uh, throughout the week. They go get lunch all the time. It's really cool. We've, we've really kind of developed a brotherhood between our moderators, our members, and just the whole family. Next, guys, we have James Freelander. He's a fantastic trader in his own right. Um, I'm good buddies with James and D. Oliver. Uh, James was very inconsistent before joining MIC. After joining MIC, he came in and, uh, you know, he watched every single video that we had in our video library, all that good stuff. And the kid is killing it nowadays. So I think he's like 26 year old business owner around there. And he's just a phenomenal trader, man. He's one of our best testimonials. And the fact that it just goes to show what hard work and, you know, persistence can really do, man. And it was all because of MIC. So we have a weekly schedule, guys. Let me show this to you. Uh, and we kind of did it even today. Um, we do this every week. So every single Monday, right? This is how the, we kind of put together our content. Every single Monday, Alex Demins obviously puts together an IG Live. If you're unfamiliar with an IG Live, it is, it is, you know, it's on the mobile. You can go see it where usually you click stories and you click this button on our homepage and you can see our IG Lives. Um, you know, he discusses trades, the, you know, his morning trades, whatever he traded that day, market sentiment. Um, here's the Instagram for my investing club. And also we've been experimenting 
with YouTube Live. So Alex will get on a YouTube channel and also do that simultaneously. And we'll kind of switch between. But Bao does the IG Lives as well. And on Tuesday, Bao does his version of what Alex does on Monday. He brings on members. It's really cool, man. He did it today. Um, and sometimes we do, you know, spur of the moment ones. Sometimes we do even more than Monday or Tuesday, like he did today on the Wednesday. But, you know, we, we like to provide as much content for you guys as possible. So you're just, you're just never in the dark. You're never behind. You know, a lot of um, other, you know, chat rooms or services, whatever you want to call them, you don't have DVDs that are like five and 10 years old, man. And not only are they upselling you on these DVDs, which we don't upsell anything at MIC, you're going to be in the know-how of literally what's going on in the market sentiment today, tomorrow, and the next day. We like to keep things current. So that's why I like to do, you know, every Wednesday, I like to do my new member webinar at 2 p.m. Uh, right now and just basically Eastern Standard Time, of course. And right now, you know, just kind of delve into like at the end, we'll do a Q&A and we'll talk market sentiment. We'll talk things. We'll talk about things that are going on and stocks that are running. And today was just a day where shorts get smoked on a lot of names. So we'll talk about things like that and hard stops and very important stuff that you need to pay attention to when you are a new trader and you really don't know how to navigate these quote unquote water, so to speak, or at least the deep end of the ocean, you know, maybe even playing the shallow end for a little while. And you're like, how do I upsize? You know, how do I protect myself? How do I risk management? All this good stuff. Uh, then Thursday, guys, Aloha Trader, uh, Austin does a webinar. So tomorrow it's 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And he talks all about what he does in MIC strategies and really cool stuff. Uh, Friday is just a random video recap between either Val or Austin. Saturday, we do a one hour Q&A every single week. Let me show you the channel. If you are in chat, it's going to be this one right here. It's the weekend mentoring. So every single Saturday at 1 p.m. to 2 Eastern Standard Time, we like to do a one hour Q&A. You can post any of your questions possible. We will answer and you have to be a member to be in here, but we will literally just answer every single Saturday, you know, any question that you guys have and just make sure that your learning experience is up every single week, even on the weekends, right? So here are previous dates that are saved by the secretary. You can click this and obviously download it. And it is a previous week of, let me sign in. <clears throat> and it's a previous week that you can catch up on and see what we answered uh, to, you know, to each question. You, know, you can see what our answers were. So that's super cool. And then uh, Sunday, like I said, uh, Joe Kelly and Matt put together their weekly Sunday video series. And we pump out two videos every Sunday on that. Endless content for you guys, like literally endless content. So next, you are a member. You just signed up. Now I'm going to show you how to navigate our video library. So we're going to go to videos tab. We're going to click this box. We're going to click sign in with Slack. And I'm going to show you what is important in here. Uh, if you are not a member yet and you're kind of just watching, then guys, seriously pay attention. So when you do join, this is what you're going to want to focus on. So you're, the first things first, you're going to want to click this video library tutorial for first timers, this big green button. This is a link to two videos that Alex himself put together. He did, he recorded himself talking the structure and curriculum of MIC and then also the MIC archive, which I'll get into next. And then very pertinent videos are things like our, you know, setting up lines. So like, this is really key, right? Uh, this, we talk about pivot lines, we talk about support and resistance. This is how to imply and put those, apply these on your charts. So thinkorswim, DOS trader, two of the biggest platforms out there. Uh, we talk about, you know, anything from low hangers, guys, top ticking, risk management, anything down to bow daily recaps. You know, the structure is Joe Kelly video series, fundamental series, and then bow daily recaps. So you definitely want to kind of watch those in order, but take a look at this button. All right. So we have four major strategies at MIC. One is the first bounce, uh, which you can find the videos right here. The second is the death line strategy, which is here. Uh, the first red day strategy, which is also kind of combined in big cap. So it's not just a small cap. While we are tailored to the small cap uh, industry and pretty much those patterns of price action, you know, stocks like $5, under 10, things like that, you know, these also work for big caps on this strategy specifically. I use it all the time. I used to use it on NVIDIA a lot. Um, and then next, you know, is low hangers, which you can find in the Dow Daily Recap category. So again, guys, lines is the key to trading. There are areas of interest. There are areas where people either want to get in or they want to get out of a stock because there's overhead. So we like to teach, you know, waiting for these perfect A plus setups or, you know, what is an A plus setup, right? Like everybody has a different A plus setup. And even that's kind of after the fact, 
we like to provide an A plus process so that it's not even about an A plus setup. It's now it's about an A plus process as Bao was tweeting today. And it's about refining and refining and refining your process. So each day, you know, what one man's A plus setup could be a C setup for him because he doesn't know it. So the criteria lines up, but you have to master the art of patience, discipline, and your specific rule set that you follow each day. And that's what we teach you to do. And then you find your own A plus strategies within our strategies. So it's just really cool. Uh, next guys, let me actually go to this. I want to show you guys the archive. Let me show you, Oop, hold on. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys what we just launched. This is called the MIC Archive. As you know, um, Slack is our platform right now, um, and they do not back up. So every three or four days, guys, if you go on like one of these channels, you're gonna see um, that a couple things, you know, just don't get posted, or you'll see a blank. You'll, it's like this, you'll see a blank channel, right? There has been thousands of messages within this since the inception of MIC. So what we went, we kind of went up one step further, right? We were like, you know what? Let's go one step further and create a backup of the Slack platform. So we got our coder together. He created this. And what this is, let me scroll back down. Just in case you guys have any questions, I'm going to get to them at the end. But if you guys have any questions, write them out here and we'll get to them at the Q&A in the new member channel. So guys, this is the MIC archive. Check this out. So if you are new to this, um, this is exclusive to annual and lifetime members. This is not for the monthlies. We spent a lot of money on this and uh, it is exclusive for the guys showing us um, a little bit more, you know, time up front, a little bit more support. So we're trying to make this very, very exclusive for you guys, but check this out. So this is a backup of everything in Slack. So if you want to go to a particular date, right? Like say June, 2000, you know, actually let's go back farther. Let's go to 2018. Let's go to like November 2018, like a random day, like Monday the 19th, right? If I click this and I click main trading chat, which is our main room, you're going to see a backup of this day. So this is super cool in the sense that you can save watch lists, you can save charts, you can save anything that was said this day, see what we said, you know, timestamps, see what was trading, how we traded it, whatever it is, uh, you guys can take a look. Um, then next, we have a community upvoted, a community voted um how do I describe this as like a category? So check this. If see this message right here on the left in our chat room, we have specific emojis that we create. So technical analysis, fundamental analysis, trading psychology, all these really cool things. If I were to click this happy face sign right here, right? And scroll down to our custom emojis. And I put this under technical analysis, just for the sake of this uh, example, this would now get funneled into and updated in this, in the website form, the archive, of community voted under technical analysis when it updates in probably like a couple minutes and all of it would go in here how sick is that so as you guys can see we've got records upon records of records and records literally endless charts endless everything news events you know uh play styles the examples whatever uh now we go even further we so that's more for the community now we created a my digital notebook which is tailored to exactly you as a as an individual. So this is this is not you know a community notebook. This is T Bradley '90s notebook, right? Like this is mine. So let me X these out of here because I was using these for examples each week. Watch this. Watch this, guys. One sec. This is going to cut your learning curve down so much. So if so, this is only one emoji specifically for the your personal notebook. So it's the handwriting emoji. If I were to put this right right here, then in like two minutes, actually, I think it's even quicker than that. Uh, sometimes it takes two minutes, but it will get updated and it will go into my personal notebook and it will show up right here. So, you know, just give it a couple minutes as this is kind of a new platform. But again, this is up and running. We're so excited about it. And not only that, you can actually go into any channel in our chat, literally any channel. Like I could go to trading stations for God's sakes and, you know, save this as, oh, Oliver's, <laughs> save Oliver's chart by clicking that. And now it's right in my digital notebook. So, you know, it's just super cool, man. It's, it's just really cool to see. It's something that'll cut your learning curve exponentially. And uh, I think you guys will really get a kick out of it. So, you know, check that out on your off time. Like I said, it's annual and lifetime. If you're already a part of that, utilize it today. If you're not, uh, if you want to upgrade, feel free to reach out to me and we can get you access to that. So that is, uh, that's, that's what's going on that's new. 
Uh, one sec, guys. All right, so pricing. Let me just go through this really quick because I'm not a used car salesman, trust me. But I do want you guys to know what is going on within our chat, uh, how we price. So we have a monthly option, which obviously you know. We have an annual option, which is you know pay 10 months and get a year, get a whole year basically. And simultaneously with annual, you're going to get the MIC archive and you're going to get access to boot camps. So any boot camp that we throw, you know, we just we just went to Philly. You know, we spent a lot of money on that. Um, all you had to do was pay your airfare and room lodging. Like obviously, we're not going to cover that, or we'd go broke. But we are going to cover the event. So if you're annual and lifetime, not only do you get to show up for free, lifetimes, which we may take this away one day, guys. This is a terrible business deal for us. It's five thousand. You get everything for life, but you get access to um, you get access to guaranteed front row seating and also live coaching before said uh, boot camp or big event, and access to the footage if you cannot make it. Um, and on top of that, you know, we again we don't upsell at MIC, guys. So everything in these three options, you get access to like literally five hundred plus video library, and we're continually pumping out content. So just so you guys know. Next, daily chat calls. For those who are not members, listen closely because this is huge for your learning curve. If you are members, listen even closer because whoever's not utilizing this needs to utilize this now. So in chat, guys, every single day, our moderators are here for you. We're here to answer any questions you have, whatever you need help with, now's your chance, obviously. So come with questions. Each moderator takes around four to seven phone calls a day, whether they are a, you know, a cell phone number that we call, or a Slack number because within our chat room, as you guys can see right here, there's a call icon. So when I go into a PM with somebody, like say this guy named Nate or this guy, uh, A-R-K-E, Ark, um, I can call them for 10 or 15 minutes and see what's ailing their process or see, what's, see what help they need in their strategies or if they're not understanding something. We like to take you guys by the hand. This is an MIC exclusive. Maybe people have started doing this, but we started this movement of calling our members and making sure our moderator team is basically there for you each and every day to make sure you are getting your needs met. Uh, next, this is really cool. Actually, let me minimize this for a second and pull it up. Uh, yeah, so check this. So every single week, like I said, we like to produce content. I like to do write-ups and I like to do kind of random things. Uh, I put together a rule list. So check this out, guys. Every single day in the main trading chat, every single morning, it's 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'm gonna show you how to find this. If you go to our main room and scroll up to 7 a.m., which is 4 Eastern Standard Time, <laughs> I have to remember that. See, I'm in Cali, so all the time I'm like, wait, what the hell? I've been doing this for six years and I'm still on Cali time like an idiot. <laughs> I swear to God. Uh, man, West Coast trading, baby, it's tough. Uh, MIC secretary guys must read Tasha's rules to stay safe on the short side. If you are new to short selling, if you want to learn about shorting, uh, this took six years uh, to really ingrain all these rules. Again, I still break a couple of these because I'm not perfect. But again, if you want the maximum level of safety in this game, uh, this is a fantastic rule set for you guys. And you know, just a couple of them. To for example, are no shorting. You know, front side day one. No shorting micro floats, like anything, I'd say three or under, maybe two or under, um, you know, because the 10th one, even if you nail nine out of 10, that 10th one's going to send you to the heavens, you know, it's to the moon, right? And then you get really screwed. Uh, I don't short phase two and three biotechs, you know, mine, Alex's, bows, our biggest career losses are always on phase two and phase three. So we chill on these now. If we trade them, we trade them with small size. Um, do not short a major acquisition. I don't know if anybody remembers but BLNK that ran, God, what was it, like a year ago? I think it was a couple months before we launched MIC. Um, you know, BLNK ran, and they had a partnership deal with, like, electric cars that had charging stations at Whole Foods. Whole Foods, I think, had just been acquired by Jeff Bezos. So as you can see, this stock that was supposed to break down and everybody was supposed to make a ton of money because it was on, like, day two or day three of the run, just fucking kept going, bro. It just kept going. So... Again, you know, it's, it's just safer to go with the stocks and short, um, you know, quote unquote piggies, so to speak, or companies that are just fraudulent, not good, have no reason to be up, no great catalyst. Last thing you want to do is pile in short on a stock where Jeff Bezos, Whole Foods, or, you know, I don't know, you know, Lululemon Parkers with some little ring think shop um, that nobody's ever heard of, you know, and they, and they send them to the moon, you know? So things like this, guys, definitely take a look. You know, if you remember, download my rule set. 
And, uh, and I hope it keeps a couple guys safe because that's what it's all about, man. I really just want to make sure you guys don't have to relearn what me, Bao, and Alex learned by getting our faces ripped off through the years because we had to do trial and error for you. You see what I'm saying? So, and again, you know, we have a ton more downloadable content. So just to show you guys a little bit more, uh, as soon as you get into the MIC, you know, scroll up to uh, the new member library or the new member channel and check this. We got so much cool stuff, guys. We have an MIC starter pack um, where me and Alex curated this for a couple months. You know, we have everything from acronyms and lingo to, uh, God, what else? So much stuff. Candlestick patterns, you know, how to read a candle, bullish and bearish, you know, uh, reversal patterns, guys. You know, what are double tops or triple tops, things like that. Um, reversal patterns are huge, you know. Uh, support and resistance, you know, stuff moves, triple tops. Stuff moves are one of my favorite moves in the game, if not my favorite move. Because I'm a candlestick player along with a line player. I love candles. So, you know, I want to see this candle. I'm waiting for this all day. You know what I mean? And then I'm getting in. So, and that's a neckline snap. So I'm waiting for things like this, right? We teach this. Um, you know, how to get a broker, a DMA broker of choice. You know, we have partnered with Cobra Trading. If you guys are not familiar, um, they're absolutely, absolutely industry standard, five star, the best customer service I've ever experienced. And I've been with literally everybody um throughout the years and you know if you're an mic member come in and say hey chad you know who's the ceo and president uh let me actually show you how to contact them that's in the broker channel which i right here broker talk so this is chad hessing guys the ceo and, and president of uh, cobra trading also their sister company venom they will give you an mic discount if you're a member of 25 percent off their commis commission base and I promise you, you will not regret it. They're always finding new locate sources. So, you know, talk to Chad and, and read this and you can understand what a clearing firm is. You know, that you can understand why they clear through Wedbush, the platform of choice. Maybe it's DOS, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's Sterling, things like this. So, you know, that's up to you guys, whoever you want to choose. But I promise you, Cobra, and I'm not biased because, you know, we rep them. They are freaking phenomenal, man. Cobra's my favorite uh, broker there is. Um, next guy's level two float rotation BWAP. Take a look at this, man. It's just really supply and demand. It's just stuff you guys need to know if you are brand new and just don't know yet. So, you know, cut your learning curve now. Don't, don't try to guess and learn this shit on your own, man. We devise so much stuff for you. Here's a bullish and bearish checklist each day. You know, here's a pre-market game plan. We've created so many templates and documents for you. So like, here's a stock, right? A stock is up, you know, say Braun today. And you're like, you know, the trend is intact, it's over, you know, to whatever, you know, just put in the data and devise a thesis and a plan of attack based on your criteria. And obviously every trade you take should be back tested, back tested, back tested so that when you, if and when you are using real money, you know how to attack it each day. Um, another thing, uh, let's see, game plan, just to show you guys a little bit of the content that we created for you. And this is all free, you know, we don't charge for any of this stuff. This is just for fun, but we would like to go the extra mile. Again, here's another, here's another way to do it. You know, here's the game plan, news, the big picture, you know, all the data, you know, input all this stuff and review your trades every day. And it's really, really, really going to help you. And there's a lot more. There's a lot more, guys. And we have a report card, for God's sakes. Look at this. This is probably one of the coolest things you could download. And yes, I am talking fast to so try to keep up. I'm drinking coffee. <laughs> All right, so check this out, guys. You just nailed a chart. You screenshot your DOS chart. Uh, if anybody doesn't know what a DOS chart looks like, this is what it looks like. Uh, here's a chart recaps and fills um, tab and channel in our chat where, you know, Bao and a lot of the teams, sometimes I post in here, sometimes I post in main. Um, and we like to post our, you know, our charts. So let me find a cool one that like, that like maybe Bao did, right? So this was brought on uh, yesterday. And, you know, Bao nailed the shit out of this. So what would you do? You would drag this in here, right? And then check this out. Hold on, guys. I'm just trying to organize a little bit. So boom, here's Bao's chart. You know, um, if you're just learning, you can literally write, you know, what Bao did. But like, hey, goal of the chart was to blah, blah, blah. You know, I traded this blah, blah, blah. And then, <laughs> you know, I made the mistakes, blah, blah, blah. And here's a B rating because I traded like, okay. You know, I don't know. You know, I'm just giving you guys an example. But this is a fantastic template to do each day. Um, you know, at our stage of the game, six years later, I don't do this anymore, but if you are new, you need to fucking do this. I repeat, you need to do this. So it's going to help you guys. Introspection. All right, let's see. Uh, next. So I'm going to go over to the Slack platform today, guys. Obviously I'm kind of simultaneously doing that. 
um, let's actually let's actually do that right now. So I hope everybody's familiar with the website, how to navigate uh, the most important things. Now let's um, let's really dive into Slack, right? So let me let me move this over here. All right. So what have we not covered today yet? So main trading chat. When you guys join, this is the coup de gras, right? This is the reason why you join. On top of our humongous video library, which is just one of the best resources out there for your learning curve. This is the second, right? This is live commentary all day, guys, about talking, Alex talking, the team, the moderators, myself, we're posting charts. You know, this was Alex today, made, uh, what, $823 on TTOO on a nice little scalp. Great job, Alex, that's one trade. Uh, we post, keep you guys informed, and show you guys what is very, you know, what our lines are. You know, the shares float on this stock, Yuma has 1.2, 1.21 million flow. You know, it's very small, guys. Three million volume in 10 minutes. You need to you need to look at these things. You need to you need to know what's going on. You need to be careful. So we like to walk you through this. <laughs> this is funny, right? So you need to. Uh, we like to post jokes sometimes, but again, we created an after hours channel for guys that want to you know post their dogs, the team, you know, um, funny jokes, you know, food, whatever it is. This is the lounge for traders. So not only do we have a no nonsense, just keep it business, value adds room main room we have a lounge where you can shoot the shit that was saying so check this out this is the mountain if anybody watches game of thrones or has this is the mountain and his unbelievably small wife and it was like a topic of discussion on like the joe rogan show look at this fucking guy i don't i think he's actually that's probably a normal sized girl it's just he's freaking the white shack so i don't know man but that's freaking ridiculous look at this uh i can only imagine um I can only imagine some things. <laughs> Let's keep it there. But uh, as, you, <laughs> as you guys can see, man, we have a lot of fun as a team. So chart recaps and fills I showed you guys. Here's how to upload uh, your computer, upload any screenshots of charts that maybe you want to post. We have a large, caps, large cap and options room for some of our traders. Uh, we work with a CPA. We partnered with Brian Rivera. He's, he's a fantastic trader. He's, he, I, I totally trust this guy with anybody's money, my own money included. This guy is the tax man. He will save you a lot of money, especially if you don't know what you're doing on the accounting side, uh, on the tax side, you know, with things like the wash sale rule and things that can save you money, guys. So definitely reach out to him. And here's how to PM somebody. So you can click on him, click message, and then boom, I'm in a private chat with him. You know what I mean? So whatever it is, uh, as you guys can see. Uh, let's go into trading accountability, buddy. So check this. So here is who to contact. I'm going to write this out for a tab partner. What is a tab partner? A tab, hold on, let's say, <laughs> hard to talk and type at the same time. Uh, so these are the two guys to contact Dr. Blunt and Woody. These two gentlemen will help you find a tab partner. What is a tab partner? A trading accountability buddy. Within this game, it is very lonely, it is very isolated. We want you guys to have that kind of angel on your shoulder, guiding you and keeping you accountable. Bao has had Alex. Alex has had Bao for many years. I've had various, numerous traders throughout the, throughout the game, and they help me keep myself accountable. They, they help me follow you know, my rule set, and we want the same for you guys. You do not have to trade alone. Uh, any announcements will go in here, guys. Boot camp, um, broker talk, like I showed you how to contact Chad, daily recaps, Bao. Uh, and Austin will post their daily recaps here, daily report cards, which you guys can post in here. I love that members are starting to do this every day. It's just really cool, man. Here's an example of someone else. You know, I love it, man. Just, uh, it's so cool, man. It's so, it's such a, it's such a family in MIC. Um, let's see guys, uh, member appreciation when we do things in here, we, uh, promote our members and stuff like that's really cool. Uh, the new member channel, obviously, which we're in right now, if you guys have questions, scroll down and, uh, type at the bottom, I'll get those later. Questions for mods. Uh, if you have a specific question for any of us, reach out. Swing trading. We've got a couple swing traders in the room. They are phenomenal. They have their own channel. Definitely learn from them. Pick their brains. And if that's your style of trading, Tay is great. She nailed BPTH when it ran and made a fortune. So uh, she's really cool too. Uh, definitely, definitely pick her brain. Uh, taxes, tech support, trader location, trading stations. Show us what your trading setup looks like, guys. Like, damn, that is cool, man. I like that. That is a, I think that's what well, you probably converted a TV. Dude, do you really need, holy shit, do you need that many scanners? <laughs> My God, MIC is a scanner in itself, but dude, that's freaking awesome. Uh, I love things like this, man. That's really cool. So, you know, we, we like to participate, man. We like to, we like to see what you guys are doing. Uh, 
watch list, guys. So I already talked about weekend mentoring. Watch list every single morning. Alex will post his watch list in the watch list channel. You at MIC, you literally have you have everything you can imagine down to a scanner, news feed, a watch list every single morning, live commentary, a video library. Like guys, there's nothing that we don't give to you and give you access to whether you're a monthly through lifetime. It's just you're gonna have a little couple extra perks as an annual and lifetime, but um, this is a watch list every day that Alex puts together. It's his, it's his ideal short you know, areas, it's his ideal long areas if he's thinking about a long. And this is just basically a guide every day so you can see what's going on and stay on track and be like, you know what, I'm, I'm doing something right, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, you know, whatever it is, guys. Um, and that's basically our chat. So, you know, what, a couple other things I want to show you guys, if you click the top left right here, um, and then click profile and account, here's what you can do. Uh, you can edit your profile. So, you know, full name, display name, uh, wherever you want, remove or upload an image, you know, and then, um, this last thing I want to share, the two last things I want to show you guys is threads. So if you click on threads, this is really cool. So anytime that someone has talked to me or I have talked to somebody and then they engage, you are going to see the notifications right here so you never miss anything, right? It's really cool. Next is a search filter. So if I go to the main trading chat and I want to search, so say you work a nine to five job and you're like, Tosh, how do I filter out some of the noise? I don't have much time to read through chat. Maybe I just want to see what ticker ran today, right? So Fran ran today. So type in Fran, Fran, whatever you want to call it. Uh, type in enter, and now you're going to see every single time that Fran was talked about timestamp in order. So how, how sick is that, right? Um, now, if you want to see what a specific trader was talking about, let's do this. Type in from colon, and then whatever trader you want to look up. So like we'll use Alex, for example, boom. Everything that Alex talked about today in order timestamp, you can read any files he posted in YouTube, like anything, like even in chat, all channels, right? So it's just super cool, man. It's such a great, like amazing filter that MIC has. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's how to do the damn thing, man. That's how to navigate MIC. So next I want to talk about uh, and then we're going to get to the Q and A, but now I want to talk about, uh, I want to talk about hard stops guys and how important they are. So if you are not using hard stops on a daily basis, you need to be, and I'm going to tell you why, because most, whatever you want to call them, gurus, you know, fake gurus out there, people who think they know what they're doing, but they don't even trade. They don't even know the repercussions of, you know, not using hard stops. Anybody that tells you like, don't use a hard stop, they're full of shit. And they don't know what they're talking about. I'm going to tell you right now. A hard stop is the number one way to protect yourself. I've been trading for six years. I wish to God I would have found them six, seven years ago, whatever it's been, from day one. If I could go back, okay, like a lot of new traders ask me and they go, hey, Tosh, if you could do it all over again, what would you do? I would use hard stops from day one because what a mental stop is, and here, let's just bring up a chart. Why not? What a mental stop is, let's do this. Let's detach. Uh, what was one today? Uh, yeah, look at this, man. Look at front. See, that's what I was saying earlier, buddy, at the beginning of the webinar. Guys, look at this. It's not your job to guess and anticipate a short or why this is manipulated. Just look, the trend is up, man. This is a long until it proves otherwise. You see what I'm saying? Now I think this is totally a risk of a T12, so I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. But I'm just saying that, you know, again, don't worry about manipulation or like all these agendas behind this stuff. Just play the chart, man. I'm telling you right now, but I digress. So hard stops. Here is the difference. Hold on, I got a bar up here, guys, that I don't think you can see. It's the zoom bar, so I have to sometimes drop this so I can just kind of see what I'm doing. Uh, one sec, so check this. This is fraud. This was yesterday, and this is today, correct? Now, here's what a mental stop versus a hard stop is, right? I'm just gonna kind of draw this out for you, and this is why it's so important. So say you're short, shit, uh, say you're short, right say you're short right here say you're short you scaled it a little bit you're you scaled blah 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 you scaled right here and now let's say you were risking high of day let's say you're risking high of day right maybe you even shorted a little bit right here as your last ad and you gave yourself a ton of room again this is not this exact example guys i'm just showing this for the sake of the argument but then this comes around and puts a broom up your ass right like a teleport candle you know, when this rips through, man, if you're like a mental stop, you're like, okay, okay, boom, boom, boom. I'm going to cut it. 
uh, if it breaks high a day right here, which it did, I, I'm going to cut it. But then it breaks down and you're like, oh man, you know what? Maybe it's breaking down. I don't know. Maybe I don't want to cut it. Um, I'll just see a little bit longer. And then here's what happens when you don't have a hard stop. And this thing lights you up and now you're stopping in, you know, stopping out and specifically on this example, one or two or even $3 later. What a hard stop will do guys it'll, is it will get you out right here, no questions asked. Now, will you incorporate some slippage sometimes? Yeah, and maybe you get filled right here. But I'm telling you right now, you're not gonna get filled right here all the time. A hard stop, while yes, you're gonna get slippage, it's gonna guarantee protect you. And not only that, because I can't tell you how many times in my career in the early stages, guys, I was like, okay, I'm gonna give it to here, I'm gonna give it to here, I'm gonna give it to here, and then I stop out right here. And I'm like, why didn't I just stop out all the way down here? So again, guys, it's like, are you protecting yourself? Are you risking a certain amount? Are you doing risk management correctly? Are you staying in the game? It is very easy to make money in the stock market. Hell, it's kind of easy to make money in life, but it's not exactly easy to keep that money. So yes, you could have nine trades out of 10 that go swimmingly, but the 10th trade wrecks you and we don't want that. We want you guys to be protected. So again, another question is, hey Tosh, you know, there are two kinds of stop, um, um, there's two kinds of hard stops. There's a limit stop or a market stop. Again, a limit stop, if this teleports through your limit, it's not gonna come back down and fill you at the trigger price and you're gonna be still stuck in. So if you walk away from your computer, you might come back and now you're down here because your limit stop didn't get marked down here. So a market stop is gonna act like a market order, but it's going to protect you. And here's the thing, the whole you know conspiracy debunkle is, or debacle, look at this fucking thing, dude, that's nuts. The whole debacle is, you know, why, why would I use a market stop or a hard stop? Because what if the market makers are watching and they manipulate me out? I'm like, would you rather get manipulated every now and then, even if that is true, which I'm sure it is, who cares? I'm not into conspiracy theories, I'm not into thinking that hard. The pr to make money, play the chart, play the lines, I'm not into this whole, like, let's break down everything, see who's in an agenda, blah, 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 blah. I'm a technical trader. Um, I barely even look at filings. I do look at filings, but again, I like the chart. Chart and price action and volume is all you technically need. Now, so say a manipulator gets you out, and yeah, he gets you out every now and then, and you take a loss because a level two market maker. I don't give a shit because the one time out of 10 that, that I obey that hard stop, that, that I would have got raped on a mental stop, you got to understand it outweighs so much more. So yeah, I'm going to lose every now and then from a manipulator, but guess what? I'm never going to get blown out of the water because I don't do mental stops. Every trade I'm taking, every trade Alex is taking nowadays, a hard stop is in place. I cannot be more persistent about this, guys. Don't like getting PMs on Twitter of a non-member, some random guy I've never talked to, never met, and he goes, Tosh, I blew my account. I know we've never talked, but I need guidance. What do I do? And I said, look, man, you could have joined MIC for $200 and learned all this shit in one freaking day, practically one webinar or two weeks and really kind of learn the system and how to do a process. And yet you lost $20,000 today. I could have taught you that in 20 minutes. So again, guys, it's like, where are you putting your priorities? And a lot of the guys that are like, you know, they got reverse backwards thinking, hey, Tosh, I'm going to sign up for MIC or I'm going to buy trading monitors when I see results from my trading. This is so fucking backwards. I can't even, I, dude, I, it's like throwing, it's like, you know, my head's between a rock and a hard place. Guys, you got to understand that is so inverse. You should, it's not, you should invest in your education when you see results from your trading and you learn it all on your own. You go through trial and error. What if you lose $200 that day? That's our membership, bro. That's what, like, <laughs> Bro, if, you, if you're not a member and you're losing this in one day, doing this on your own, you are very, you, you are just at odds with yourself, man. I'm telling you right now, you don't know what you can learn in a community that's supportive of, you know, 900 plus members all helping each other and looking at the same thing, man. So again, I can't speak it highly enough. You know, we teach very very, very um, up-to-date, good stuff that can save you. And again, man, this is this is one loss. And that's low-key fees every day. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, invest in your education. But again, all right, I'm done selling. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not here to sell you. I'm just here to do a cool webinar. So let's. That's pretty much the uh, webinar, guys. I want to open this up to a Q and A. So now that I'm now that it's kind of free talk. So uh, 
Uh, where is my, did I move it? Yeah, so we'll do a Q&A, guys, then I'll show you a really, really cool thing at the end uh, for those who stick to the end. Uh, so let's open this bitch up to some questions. Who's got questions? Anybody that has questions, write them down here. Um, and don't raise hands, guys. Just, just literally just write them down here and I'll see them. But uh, ask me some questions. We'll talk about some cool topics and things like that. And again, if it's level two related, guys, I'm going to save you a lot of time. And we'll talk about that. But let's, let's talk about some things. What's ailing you? Like, do you know about trends? Do you know about overhead? Oh, why do I have two of this up? What was I watching before? I can't. Man, this was a sick, for those who got low kids, this was a sick day too, play, man. I love this. What filters do you use to screen for stocks pre-market? Nate, nothing. Simple answer, nothing. I don't use a scanner. It's a waste of money. 100% waste of money. Let me make this very clear. We've got 900 members in MIC all trained and looking at the same strategies and the same major stocks each day. Here's what you do each day. Here's your scanner. MIC is your scanner. You go to the watch list and you go, boom, Alex is looking at all these and he's Eastern Standard Time. So he's posting this at the correct times. Second, we have, <laughs> look at this, you guys scroll through chat in the mornings, everybody is talking about the same thing. If you're paying for a scanner and you're not a member, it's such a waste of money. I had, um, I won't say the name, because I'm, I'm, I'm not in a bad, I don't, I don't bash anybody, I'm, I'm not about that, I'm not about negativity or bashing of any sort. If you want a scanner, absolutely go for it. I think they're absolutely unnecessary if you're in a community like MIC, I had a scanner for four years. I, I paid for it every month. Um, it helped me until I realized in the creation of MIC, I don't even use it anymore. I, I, so I canceled the subscription. I never looked at it. Um, if something runs on a radar, guys, you're going to see it in main trading chat. I can almost guarantee and in a timely manner. And that goes with news. So again, it's like, do you need a new scanner and a, and a regular scanner? No, no. <laughs> But if I were to do scanners, um, what my filters were back then, Nate, were, um, oh God, if I can even remember, uh, stocks under $5, so like under seven bucks, um, at least 300,000 um, uh, volume a float of at minimum over 4 million and um, I, short float percentage small, like at least, at least it had to be under 10%, like things like that, man. Um, MTXR, I see a lot of arrows on charts where trades are executed. Are traders typically executing something like this, 100, 100, 100, 100, or something like five? It all depends on the trader, brother. I execute in thousands, so like, or more. So like, if, so here, like, uh, here's an example. Let's pull up some. Oh, like here's Bao. Usually Bao is, you know, doing 1,000s, right? So that's like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4. So he likes to go in thousands. It just depends on your bankroll and your size and, and throughout the day. So like as we size down throughout the day, because this is channel trading, we size down because this is in zombie hours, which we talk about how to stay safe. Look at this rocket. Again, man, it's long until it proves otherwise. Don't try to guess the top. Don't be, don't be this guy, man. I swear to God, dude, you want to, you want to, you want to lose or tread water for the next three years. Here's how you should trade. Here's how to lose, lose money for the next three years. Pretend, try to guess that that's the top <laughs> on every move. I'm telling you right now, this is how new shorters lose money and then go three years later, Tosh, why am I not profitable? Why? Because you're hitting fucking front side. I'm sorry. You know where the guaranteed money is? The day two low hangers. The day ones that breach death lines. Something like this, you know. If, if Yuma tanks under this level, under this, not only a coupling factor, under four, and this line at like 385 support, I'm going hard. There's enough room to come down. Do you see this? Don't try to guess the top. And coincidentally, that's hysterical because that would have been a decent short on the acceleration. But my <laughs> watch this be the total top. But my point is, guys, is don't try to front side trade, man. You're just going to get ripped. I know so many unbelievable traders who got wrecked throughout the years, and uh, it's just not worth it, man. It's, it's not worth it. So uh, to answer your question, MTXR, um, it just depends on your bankroll, your size. This is Bao's chart for Fran yesterday. Um, you know, this, if this wasn't Bao's chart, you know, these could be hundreds. It just depends on what you want to do and how you back-tested your scaling process. Um, let's see, another one. Uh, yeah, like here's Bao on camp yesterday. You know, I don't even know about what size Bao was using. He may have had 20,000 shares for all I know. Uh, maybe 10,000. I, I don't know. Maybe even 5,000. I, I have no idea. Uh, you can ask him. But 
The point is, is it depends on how you scale. I like to go thousands or 1500 uh, on arrows. So it just depends, man. It just depends. Maybe 700 sometimes. It depends on the range of the stock. This stock has a ton of range. I'm not going to go 1500, 1500, 1500 if I'm trying to scale a big move. You see what I'm saying? Like I may scale down. Like maybe I do freaking seven of these and they're all 500. I don't know. You know, it just depends, man. It really just depends. Uh, I'm very blunt. So if I say something in my teaching, I'm very blunt. <laughs> um, do any moderators make calls after 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for those who, yes, yes. I think Joe Kelly does and a couple others, trend supporter. Uh, my time each day is 2.30 Eastern Standard Time till close. Um, so reach out to Joe Kelly and a couple others who I think do in after hours and after the market closes for sure. Um, JTAP, what's up, buddy? What do you think of Fibonacci retracements? Um, mm, do you want the dick answer or do you want like the nice answer? The dick answer is I don't think anybody on earth who trades small caps should do anything but VWAP price action and volume reading. I don't even need VWAP these days, but I will tell you VWAP I think is amazing. And this is the only indicator I'd ever recommend. I think everything else is just noise. I think it's lag. I think it's, uh, I think it's just, it's whatever. Now, that being said, Fibonacci retracements is actually one of the only things I actually did like in the past when it came to in indicators. So, you know, um, where's Fibonacci retracements on here again? I can't remember. I think you go right here. So, you know, you can go like, right. You can see like the zero to 100 from the start of the move or whatever and use these. I mean, it's up to you, man. I don't like this stuff. I really, I, I just, here's the thing. It looks fancy. Everybody sounds smart who posts them on their charts and talks all this mathematical nonsense. But you know, I mean, to each his own, man, to each his own. I, I really, if you can make money that way, then by all means, brother, keep doing it. But <laughs> that was the goddamn top. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, but I will say it's not for me. Yeah, no problem, buddy. Um, this is all you need, man. Keep it simple. You know the acronym KISS, keep it simple, stupid, or keep it super simple? Just keep it simple, man. Lines, outer lines, BWAP, underwater, depth line, first bounce, very simple, man. Um, people who use Fibonacci's or... Um, you know, RSI, Bollinger Bands, Ichimoku Cloud. It's just they're complicating their own process because then you get dependent on that shit. And you go, man, I can't trade without Fibonacci's or I can't trade without, um, you know, Ichimoku Cloud. And it's like, dude, like, yeah, you can, bro. You're just complicating this shit. Um, next question. Is it a quick, uh, what, what, is it a quick 100 then close that and execute another 100? No, 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 no. So MTXR, okay. That was a part of your other question. So no, this is what's called scaling, brother. So if I were to scale, say this was just backside for the sake of this argument, um, this is what's called scaling. So if I wanted to short, you know, say the line was, um, say, say this was the line, right? Say 18 was the line that I was looking to scale into. If this was the line, it's not that we're hitting right here and then covering immediately. Like I'm scaling this, you know what I mean? Or any other play that I would take, but you're scaling this and then ideally uh, covering out. So, you know, these are all entries. So maybe, I don't know, whatever, 500, 500, 500, and then you're scaling out. So that's the whole point. That's ideally what's happening, right? So it's not that you're going, hey, one, and then cover. Hey, one, and then cover. It's just uh, whatever, whatever you feel, however you scale. You know, sometimes guys go one and done, like, I'm going to get in here, I'm going to let it, here's my fudge factor, and then I'm going to cover down here, or scale the thing, you know, break it into bullets. I don't like to go into war with nothing but one shot pistol. I like to go in with a machine gun and spray, you know, boom, 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 you know, size it accordingly as per your risk management. Um, Nate, I meant how do you select the stock universe you guys trade? Should all stocks be under 10 to short anything else? Well, here's the thing. Small caps are very identifiable for certain criteria, right? I like, um, I like floats from 5 million to 20 million, so to speak. Yeah, about four to 20. Um, actually, the sweet spot's about five to 15. And then, you know, a certain amount of volume, like a million volume on the day, you know, the daily chart looks like shit. And, um, and uh, you know, really no catalyst, things like this. So it's not really just in the scanner. It's just a bunch of criteria together. You know, it's a low short flow percentage. Um, God, what else can I say? I like stocks under $5 personally. I think they're much less chance of being real companies as uh, big funds and, you know, big money can get in on stocks $5 and over, which is one of the best lessons I ever learned in trading. So, you know, on something like Fraun, I don't give a 
fuck what this does, man. I'm not touching this. I don't want it. It's $17. Where am I going to make my money? On the Yumas when these crack. Where am I going to make my money? On the TTOOs when this cracks. So where am I looking, you know, for a short? I'm, I'm looking for this thing to crack right here, and I'm interested. Neckline, neckline. Um, you know, I'd start getting interested here, but I'd probably wait for this to break, wait for that to break. And then uh, this was a low hanger. I gave these levels yesterday. This, look at this. This is the beauty of outer lines, man. This was up pre-market yesterday around right here. I said, this is the area I would, uh, this is ideally where you scale. I literally drew this out. I just remember I just erased this on accident. But this is what I had yesterday, man. It's just in the levels, man. It's in the price section. And then this happens intraday. So while people were scaling the inner lines here, 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 I was like, dude, this is the area you want to scale. And then boom, perfect rejection and off. Then neckline, depth line, snap, and boom, you could have made some money on the depth line break. So, you know, there's just so many things to pay attention to and so many strategies that we teach. But there, you look, trading's not easy, as I always say, but it's very simple. And we've simplified a lot of this, man. This is uh, something you stay away from, you know, on the short side. This is something you would absolutely attack with, you know, like a rabid dog on the short side. Um, so things like that. Uh, Joey the Juice Man with somebody. Uh, so when shorting, you pick out what's in your criteria of trading and take locates, or do you usually wait? Exactly. You know, everybody has a process. Everybody has certain criteria that they wait for every single day. What am I waiting for? I'm waiting for a stock like like you want to be up. This is what I'm looking for pre market. Anything under five dollars, you know, a certain amount of volume, it's got meat to come down. It's not a, an amazing catalyst. Things like TTOO. I see both of these up pre-market. I'm reserving shares. I'm hitting up Cobra. I'm hitting up my brokerages. I'm going, what do you have? Give it to me. Boom, boom. Um, and then a day two low hanger like this. Boom. I'm getting shares for these three, 100%. This, I could give a rat's ass. I could give a rat's ass. This is too, I don't like $12 stocks. You know, if this was six, maybe, but I don't like this shit. You can do whatever it wants. I don't care. I don't have FOMO. I do not even experience FOMO anymore because I know what loses me money after six years. I go, great, great fucking job. I don't make money on setups like that. Continue, by all means, make money. I make money on this, this, and this. So I reserve for those and I wait. Yeah, buddy. Simple, simple, simple. Everybody's got a process. You just got to back test and find what works for you. Uh, MT, <laughs> oh shit, can you guys hear me now? Am I muffled? We might just have to wait it out a second. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, thank you guys. Definitely keep me updated on sound always, uh, if you can. Uh, MTXR, if you're in and out, is that recycling shares? Yes, correct. So here's like a, but you want to play around a core ideally. So here's, here was the plan yesterday, right? So check this out, MTXR. Uh, let's draw this out. Say I scaled this into my plan. Say these were my entries, right? And I was willing to scale up to right here, but obviously didn't make it to high a day with a, with a hard stop over here. So say this was yesterday, right? Like I'm scaling the area I want and I wait for it. And then boom, I cover the first wash, but I only cover half size. So let's just say for very simple sake, just to keep it very simple for you guys, say that this is 1,000. Say that's 500 and 500. That's 1,000 shares just for the sake of this argument. Say I cover so you can keep along. Say I, I cover 500 here, right? I have 500 shares left with a fantastic average, right? So here, let's literally draw out what my average would be. Like this would, this would about be my average. We'll change it to a different color. Say the orange line's my average. Actually, let's make it, sorry. Let's make it blue so it's really identifiable. Say that's my average. I cover half right here, 500 shares, whatever it is. Maybe this is 200 shares and that's 100 for some of you new guys that trade really small size. Or 10,000 and 5,000, it doesn't matter. But say this is half size and I have a really good average on pops. So say this pop back up or say like even right here, I cover a little bit more right here. I'm adding back shares here. So I have a core position of half here and I'm adding back over here. So while it's gonna bring my average down to about here, if I add, I still have a really sick average and I'm recycling shares. Now, this is just a dump fest. Ideally, you know, this is my normal average like I showed you. I cover right here half. And then it bounces back up to here. And then I, you know, I throw on and recycle more here. I like recycling is really trying to get as close to your average as possible on a bounce back up. So it's almost as if you covered and then literally got your exact average again at a really good average, like back up here. So as if nothing happened, but you cushioned yourself so that if it did run against you and you had to stop out up here, you, you're really just breaking even because you're already up on the trade. I hope that's clear, man. Was I a little too quick on that? I want that to be clear. 
Recycling is adding back to your original position. Good, good, good. It's adding back to your original position after cushioning yourself so you're riding for a much lower move. Now, your average will get affected either way. But here's the thing. You're already in the money, and just be smart about your ads. So if you're, you know, again, if this is your average and you cover or you add back here, don't add, you know, three times your amount of size, ideally, so that it brings your average all the way down here. You know what I mean? You want to do this correctly. So if that's half size and you add another half, then yeah, your average is going to be about right here. But guess what? Your average is right there and now you have full size again. So yeah, um, recycling shares, you will get more locates. No, no, Joey. So here's the hardest part about shorting, man. Let me make this very clear. Let me make this very clear. You have to already reserve in the morning and pay for it. Yes, it's the cost of doing business for a short seller but you have to reserve enough so that you know what your full size is, you know what you're already gonna scale. It's very rare that you go, okay, I'm gonna reserve right now, say, say new traders are like, I'm gonna get 500 shares, but I want a maximum of 1,500. Then when it keeps running on them or the trade keeps panning out, then they go, oh, I'll get some more. And then guess what, they're gone, bro, and you can't up your average or skill correctly because you did not pre-plan and you were a quote unquote cheapskate for the day, right? You gotta be willing to spend some money and this is why it's so important that when you're a new trader, you do not try to make money tomorrow, man. You learn a foundation, you backtest, maybe you simulate trade, you don't even have a real account yet, and um, you just practice, bro. You just practice for a little while, because then when you're ready to trade money, you're so, you're so ready that you, you have to pay for locates. Every day we're down first, because we're paying money for locates, you know what I mean? Like, look, shorting is not, the easiest thing in the world and it's expensive and it's um it's just more complicated this is why i like to say to guys you know you want to learn how to long first there's really no fees involved compared to shorting there's all that extra money you can save and you want to know how stocks can move to the upside first before they come to the downside because look man the, the balloons got to inflate before it comes back down right like these things have got to run like you gotta see these type moves before they have room to come down. And now look at this fucking thing. Like it's dead in the water. Um, and you know, this will probably bleed back down to where it started from. I'm not saying short right now, I don't know. I have no idea, I haven't been watching it. But I'm just saying the odds are better because this thing is kind of done. You know, these are just bag holders now. Um, but this, this will come down eventually. But I don't know if this doesn't go to 40 first. You know what I mean? I'm not a big fundamental player. I'm not looking into filings. So I'm sure a bunch of filings guys would laugh at me and go, ah, blah, blah, how could this get to 40? I don't give a shit. The whole point is the chart is screaming at me right now. I don't want to short this. I don't want to attack. I don't even want to guess. I'm going to go with my for sure setups that make me money weekly. Um, and I'm going to stick with that, man. Some of these setups are really easy. Um, well, very simple. I never want to use the words easy in trading because that's such hoo furu dipshit. Um, nothing is easy in trading, but, but it can be simplified. This is a complex trade. Uh, this is simple. This is simple. Does that make sense? I'm waiting for certain levels to break and I'm waiting for certain levels to be reached if I'm using fantasy orders. Boom. Simple, simple, simple structure. Uh, if you purchased 1,000 share locates, use them. Do you still have 1,000? Do you have 1,000 the entire day? Yes, you do. MTXR, you have this. So if I locate, so here's what I would do honestly today. Usually on something like this camp, I would reserve about 5,000 shares to start in the morning. And then say I use all 5,000. Just say I did a one pop shot, boom. Uh, 5,000 right here, just in a perfect world, right? Like I nail this, a top tick 5,000 shares and I cover. I can now use that, they're recyclable. So I can use uh, 5,000 again and 5,000 again, or say I use 3,000 here and cover 3,000. It's not like I just have 2,000 now to short. No, I have 5,000 yet. You, you bought them for the day. You rented the shares for the day. You have them the whole day. Yes. And time for some coffee. <laughs> but yes, so that's uh, how to be clear on that, brother. All right, does anybody have any other questions? Because these are good, man. Keep them coming, seriously. I'm, I'm here for you guys. So I love doing these public webinars, man. I want to help as many new guys as possible. Um, I, I just really, I really like helping out, man. Um, great question. Are you making more money in the morning or in the afternoon? I know very, very, very few traders, Nate, who make more money in the afternoon. Most of the money is made in the first hour of the day. Why? Because this is when retail traders are trading. 
you're trading against people mostly, um, unless you're trading like an unbelievably big algo institution, institutional ownership driven stock. You are mainly trading against me, Bao, Alex, Joe Kelly, you know, Joey the Deuce Man, MTXR, um, anybody in here, right? You're trading against retail traders. Um, I know that sounds bad, like we're all trading against each other, but that is supply and demand, guys. Is, you know, I mean, everybody's just trading against each other. We're all just filling each other, right? Uh, <laughs> no pun intended. Good God. We're all filling each other's uh, stock orders. Um, I know somebody's thinking of a dirty joke, but... Um, Yes. So after the first hour, you know, volume kind of dries up, people go to work, algorithms can tend to chime in. And that's the time where, you know, people really, really, really uh, have less control. And this is why we basically invented or coined the term zombie hour is because this is when the volume dries up, um, you know, every day at the first, after the first hour, like uh, something like this. This is a great example. This is a fucking great example, dude. Look at this. Look at this. This is why we teach the zombie hour, guys. What you have to join MIC if you don't understand this shit. Time level, 10.30, 7.30 my time. When did this thing, so we teach the zombie hour, guys, that at this time frame, every single day, volume dies off, and then a stock that is still up and not breaking down tends to quote unquote zombie. What does that mean? It comes back from the dead and squeezes shorts, and most of the time on the dot, it starts reversing at this time. Let's take a look. Actually, I want to I want to really expand this for you guys. Uh, how do I det ah, detach? I got I got to show you. This is just too good of an example, man. We do we teach this shit every fucking day. Uh, T T O O boom today. Look at this. Ten thirty boom zombie time. So it's not that you have to stop trading at ten thirty, guys. Not at all. It's not that we say, hey, stop trading. It's just no why and what you're trading and how to stay safe. It's not that you should just stop trading after 1030. Shorts should just be more careful because these things tend to rip back, especially if they're kind of up and they're not breaking the death line and they're not breaking in major neckline. This was a key one, right? So this was, um, this was really, this was a really key level. If this held, boom, and it did. And it teleported over VWAP reclaim. It really breached new high of day at the same time. This is the FU candle of shorts. I like to call this the fuck you candle of shorts. Uh, pardon the language, but this is the broomstick up the booty hole. <laughs> as bad as that sounds, because that's exactly what it fucking feels like if you're stuck in this short and you get ripped on, man. Again, we're just normal guys, man. We're not even super polished. We're just normal guys, man. But this is funny, right? So you do not want to be short without a market hard stop protecting you because this can happen and you're absolutely smoked in the zombie hour. But you can reverse engineer and take advantage a lot on what zombie hour is. This is a time where a lot of traders like to wait for and go long, long bias traders. Does that make sense? So while shorts are maybe protecting themselves and maybe they'll short later when we get end of day breakdowns or 2 p.m. give backs, blah, 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 vice versa. Um, a lot of, um, a lot of longs take advantage of this time. You know, this is great and ride trend. So yeah, that would that would have been a nice long, man. Um, I think I heard you correctly about recycling. So if you buy X what uh, X amount, you can use those all day. Even yeah, yeah. So Joey, yes. So uh, again, again, just one last time for uh, for anybody who's unclear because I didn't know this shit when I you know MIC wasn't around when I first started trading. I had to I'm self taught, man. Bao came in later and Alex came in later and really helped me define my process. But man, so I had to learn all this shit on my own throughout the years, man. I've been trading for six years and nothing like MIC was around. Oh my God, dude. It took me forever to even learn the fundamentals of shorting. Yes. If you hit your broker up in the morning, like I would today, um, on something like a uh, camp today, buddy, like I said, I get 5,000 shares. I short all 5,000 right here. I cover immediately. I have 5,000 to use again. If I use 3,000, cover 2,000. Uh, or I'm sorry, if I use 3,000, cover 3,000, it's not like I just have 2,000 left. I have the whole 5,000 to use again. You can recycle them out all day. Look at TTOO. Nice move. Nice move. What was here before? <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Was TTO? No, what the hell? Well, how'd this change? I can't remember what I had. Oh, front. Yeah, front. There we go. Um, dude, that's so funny. I was like, don't short this because this is not the top. And then boom. <laughs> not that it was saying it wasn't the top it's just you guys just don't want to be guessing any one of these can be the top you know these are acceleration to the upside on a very overextended stock but 
the odds are, you know, people thought this was the top. People thought this was the top. People thought this was, you know, this and that. You know, this could be the top for God's sake. Or this could breach hot new high of day. And if this did, going into close and then all the stuck shorts, you know, just have to pile on each other and get out. This could walk up after hours to 27. I don't know. I've been around long enough to see moves like dries and LMF Bay or whatever that one was, BPTH, and just anything can happen, guys. So you got to be careful. Look at the price action on Yuma and TTOO today. Do you see the market trend that's going on? We got Fran right here as the hot chick, this major, you know, Super Saiyan stock right here. And we got some sympathy looking charts. These are there's no coincidence that a big fucking run like this starts making all the little, you know, monkey see, monkey do. Now we got Yuma, now we got TTOO kind of, you know, this is leading the pack, and now the wolves on the side of the pack are like, hey, I'm gonna do the same thing. So again, sentiment in small cap land is huge. Um <laughs> Joey, I fucking love MIC. Thanks. Yeah, of course, man. We're here for you. Um where are the zombie hours in Eastern Standard Time? I think you are in a different time zone, so not sure. Yes, yeah, sorry, buddy. I, I mentioned it out. Um, I know my chart says differently. It's a seven, it's just after the first hour, so 10:30 Eastern Standard Time and, and on. Are you using three-minute candles at the open or do you switch to one minute? I will never look at a one-minute chart for the rest of my life. Uh, I know Alex swears by him, he loves them, he makes a lot of money doing one minutes. I I can oh god, they they drive me nuts, man. Here's the difference. Like Look at this. This is a one minute chart. See how many candles you have to pay attention to. I, I get faked out in a lot of these, man. I like the three minute because you can just really see the trend and gauge what's going on. So it takes a long time to get used to three minute. I think it took me two full weeks when I made the conversion six years ago. But let me tell you something, uh, an, um, an old friend of mine advised me to go three minutes. I have never looked back in like five plus years and I will never look back. So this is the only time frame I use three minutes. Uh, it's the only thing I need, and obviously a daily chart. So if I want to look at like a year chart, um, and each candle is a day, but I am using, oops, I am using three minute charts, hundred and ten percent, and I'll never change, and I'm not lenient about it. Oh man, this is such good coffee. God, I was off coffee forever, and I just introduced it back in my diet, and uh, <laughs> the addiction is. It's got a hold on me, man. It's like venom, dude. I'm telling you. I'm like coffee man right now. I'm losing my mind. All right, who else? Who's got some questions? I still got some time, man. I, I've still got some energy. As shocking as that is, I sound like a crack whore because I talk so fast, but um, who's got questions, man? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done drugs in my life, man, but I totally probably sound like I do with all this fucking energy. I'm just a, I'm just a energetic, emotional guy, man. Which is exactly why you guys need to play hard stops, especially if you're an emotional human being. I'm a very emotional trader, man. Level two fakes me out a lot because I go, oh man, bid popping. This is a huge order. I'm a boom, boom, size in. Oh man, just play the chart, play the lines, uh, size in accordingly, set your hard stops. And I walk away, man. I get in a stock, I walk away, basically almost as if I was a swing trader, which I'm not. And then, you know, I, I trust in my process, man. Um, do you enjoy trading Cali time? I'll tell you something. I will tell you something on this, bro. This is so funny. I'm so glad you asked that. And um, how does it have an effect on you? Yes. This is such a fun topic, bro. I'll tell you why. So when I started trading six years ago, I was the laziest piece of shit on the planet when it came to waking up early. I'd sleep till freaking. I always had like night jobs way back when. I like I was like bartenders and stuff like that way back in the day, man. I did like film industry stuff, like a lot of stuff like that, right? So I'd wake up, bro, at minimum 10 a.m. every single day for like until like I was like 21 years old, 22, like like just a degenerate. And uh, when I found trading, obviously you have no option. I started trading the mornings in Cali, which is 6.30 a.m. And obviously, if you're any kind of smart individual who cares about your trading career, you're waking up at 4.45, like I do every day. Uh, now for the last five plus years and you're getting locates, you're securing a thought process, you're securing a plan, putting your ideal levels in. Um, but bro, when I first started, I would, I would hop in the shower first thing because it was the only thing that could like train this nutless monkey, right? Like who is just would normally be asleep. And bro, I'd want to throw up in the shower because it was so early for months. Every day I woke up, I was like, I can't fucking do this. I can't, I, I literally, how do people do this? I can't do this. I would want to throw up in the shower every day for months. Then 
I, you just get used to it, bro. You just get used to it. Then I went into like this mode or phase where I got nothing but excited to wake up and I popped right out of bed at the, at the, you know, the quote unquote chance of making money. And specifically back then it was definitely a shot in the dark because I didn't have training. I was just this kid learning by himself. Right. But you know, here I am 29 now I've been trading almost seven years or six, six and a half years probably. And, um, and I've learned, you know, from some of the best in the industry, Bao, Alex and, and a couple others. And, and I do my thing every day. But the point is, is nowadays I can't sleep past fucking five 30 on a weekend. So you train your body and it gets so easy. But I, I was like the most extreme case, man. I was a guy who slept his whole life away practically in the day and like party until 3am every day or worked. And now I, you know, I wake up every day responsibly and I would, I wouldn't change it for the world. And I, I absolutely love it. I, I always thought, I always thought though, that I would want to be on Eastern standard time. Until I go to Philly event, you know, this last, this last month and I go stay at Alex's trap house for, for a couple, uh, what was it like three or four days I get up on his time frame, and sure it's easy to get up at seven 30 devise a plan, all that stuff, whatever. I could not stand that the market closed at 4 PM. Dude, I was like, what kind of freaking Bermuda triangle nexus of the universe shit is this? I'm Alex. If Alex is listening, he's going to laugh his ass off because he knows how much I hated it. Bro, I, and he hates it too. The time frame here is, yes, you get up at 6.30. Bro, you're done by one. It is 12.7. Look at this. It is 1217 right now. And the day is practically over for trading. So guess what I get to do? I get to go hound girls. I get to go you see girls. I get to go drive around. I get to help members. I get to, dude, it's not even lunchtime, man. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I could I could rant on that forever, man. So as you can hear the passion. Um, yeah, so that's how it affected. Jesus Christ. Gorkim, where the hell are you, bro? Market closed at 9 p.m. That sounds awful, bro. <laughs> 317, then. yep, yep. Do you go to bed early to be able to do this, or just, do you just do it tired? Nope, I go to bed almost every single night at 12 or 1 in the morning. I'm with a girl uh, all the time, and, uh, you know, it, nah, man. Yep, yep. As you can probably do the fundamental analysis research on that. <laughs> Uh, no, nah, man, I, I get about four hours of sleep a night, man. And honestly, I don't even drink coffee anymore. Today is like literally, this is the first week of coffee I've had in like two years, man. I, I'm so good about discipline with diet and stuff and you have to be in training, man. But I just got that natural crackhead energy, man. I don't know how to say it. I don't even smoke weed or anything like that, man. I just fucking just take care of your body. You'll be, you'll be sound and I don't know, get more sleep than I do, but women will definitely drain it out of you. <laughs> Yeah, you want to be a good trader, get on coffee, wake up early, and don't date women. I mean, don't date in general. Fucking hell, man. Anybody you're interested will take all the energy out of you, and then it's hard to trade. But I'm kidding, of course. You know, live your life responsibly and accordingly. But, you know, it's just fun to talk about. It's fun. But it, it's passion, man. It's passion. Like, at the end of the day, you know, Val's always doing rants and walks and, and driving talks on this. It's like when you find what you love to do, it's your passion, man. You fly out of bed, man. It's when you got to pay the bills, you know, in a nine to five job that you hate or something that you really just don't like. Dude, it's hard to get out of bed. It's hard to want to do anything. I remember those days, man, where I had jobs that just hated, you know, I didn't like bartending or bar backing that much. I mean, yeah, I'm a social guy somewhat, but I didn't like that shit, man. I wanted to do, I wanted to work from home. I wanted to be with my dog all day. I wanted to, you know, chill with my lady if I had one at the time. I wanted to see family whenever I want, things like that, bro. So, you know, again, man, this is why we strive to teach you guys and want to uplift you guys and level you guys up, man, is we want you guys to live a life that you want. You know, it's as simple as that, man. All right, back to questions. Do you have a specific time to stop trading or do you check in from time? Bro, I'm always checking in. I, I used to cut myself off at 1030, but here's the thing, man. If this death candle is down and, you know, I get a candle um, from here, here to here, I'm going in, man. I'm hitting that crack. So again, that can happen at any time. Um, oh, nice. MTXR. Good. You trade from home and trade on the side. I like that. But yeah, yeah. No. So Joey, uh, I used to cut myself off completely, but there's really no reason, man. You could make money all day. Theoretically. I like to make the majority of my money in the morning, the first hour. And then yes, I do make money later on in the day if the trade presents itself. So, um, yeah, yeah, no, no, I don't cut myself off usually anymore anyways. And I suggest you don't guys, you don't, 
you don't need to cut yourself off. You just got to be responsible with your stops and with your risk management. If you're taking a trade midday, don't take a, don't take a boredom trade. Take a trade that you do have an edge in. What would tight risk, you know, because maybe you're in like algo driven time or a little bit less predictable. But again, that first hour, man, that's, that's where the money is made, brother. That's where the predictable, you know, um, the moves are made like camp, right? So, you know, this move is unbelievably predictable. Why am I looking at this level right here into the three? Well, okay, let's talk about this. This was key today. Uh, so $3, whole number, huge. Number two, I like to go where the heavy consolidation areas are. See this from day one, it's already made it to here. So also, look at this, coupling factors, man. Coupling, this is a previous top. This is a previous top, is that clear? So where is my scale area? Exactly where I just drew this. This is the perfect plan for today, in my opinion. Why? Because you have three things. You have a beaten down stock from day one. This is a, low, this is a day two continuation, low, low hanging fruit, right? So you have a beaten down stock from day one, huge, cons so I would have used this consolidation area if it was down here or into this, but you gotta understand, it's already above it because it did this, and it didn't really gap either way. So I'm gonna give a little room into the three lines. So I put a three line, and I like this consolidation area right here mixed with this top, boom. That's the area where people are gonna want out. That is called baggy city, where a lot of volume can get depleted from the so from the uh, quote unquote balloon, right? So, you know, the helium balloon is filled up. Let's poke this balloon and let the helium fade out. This is where the helium comes out, in my opinion. And here's the thing, man, not every trade is gonna go according to plan. If this breaks this, guess what? I got a hard stop right here ready to kick me out. Boom, protection. I'm not doing a mental stop and then I stop out here like an idiot. That's noob shit. Hope that's clear. All right. Um, Nice, be patient. Damn, Fraun coming back. Yeah, for, dude, see, that's the point, man. This is a long until it proves otherwise. Like, this is not proof that it's in the, that this is a short. You know what I mean? This is just healthy consolidation and, uh, you know, some profit taking from highs. This does not mean it's done. You want this thing to crack, man. You want this thing under, like, 1350, and then maybe we start seeing some backside in at 12 and then bleed off the next three days or so. But this is still just dipped. Look, people thought... People thought, you know, this was the beginning of the end, right? And then, boom. That's the whole point about freaking trend, man. How do you develop the range of the scale? Uh, uh, oh, that's, uh, that's just, yeah, teleport down for sure, brother. Um, yeah, and then teleport up the, up the stink. Uh, MTXR, how do you develop the range of the scale? Brother, you got to back test this. So if you don't know how to scale yet, please don't use real money on that. You need to back test on your ranges. And here's the thing, like I just said, if I were playing, you know, camp, what am I willing to scale? I'm willing to scale to the three line. So three um, through probably like realistically, if I really look at this, I probably would start at halfway through the consolidation. So I like 286 through three. If it breaks three, that is my cut. Does that make sense? Anything in here, I scale. Every stock is different. Omar, for low hangers, do you use 30% size or more if it's above VWAP and under uh, it, or do you use that rule for day one? Depends who you are. You can talk to Alex about this uh, uh, also, but I use the 30% only on day one because here's the thing. Yes, this is over VWAP, but it's a broken day one. This is already in backside. The continuation play means a continuation of trend that is already broken down from day one. So the backside and downtrend is in the downtrend, continuation downtrend. So yes, while this is VWAP, I may even get full size up here, even though it's over VWAP. I would never do this on day one because over VWAP on day one is usually a significant, almost all the time, um, and I, uh, uh, generalization of front side, and I don't even hit front side. So I don't even do this rule on day one. That's Alex's rule. So it's up to you, you know, just up to your play style. And if you want to kind of copy Alex on that, for sure. The backside is a big crack. So backside is usually under VWAP. It's, um, it could be the start of a death count. It's a major trend break. Uh, here, true backside is this for me on this. Let's see, true backside, honestly, man, is literally, God, even, I'd say true backside is probably 350, but you can get away with probably under 380. That's backside to me. Anything above this is front side. Anything above this line. Anything right now above, and again, you know, everybody's got this a little bit different, you know, because backside is a very general term. 
But again, you just want a broken stock with a lot of overhead. So, you know, if this stock was trading down here, that's a lot of stuck overhead, man. That's a lot of backside-esque move for any pop to get shorted into or sold into because these guys are stuck. Um, it's usually under VWAP. It's a trend break. It's under a death line. Death line is true backside, man. Um, and um, yeah, so things like that, man. True backside for this play, I mean, true, true backside would be, fuck, for real, like under 11. I mean, un there's still room to come down. Look, well, look where this move originated from. It's because you got to understand on a multi-day runner, this is different. This is a day one runner. This is a multi-day runner. This, even under this level, all these guys are still in the money long. You see what I'm saying? Like, even if it was trading right here at 1049, all these guys are still in the money. Like, this is a multi-day runner. You got to look at the multi-day trend. You can't just look at the day one trend or the day two trend. Um, so, you know, backside for day two is like, I'd start hitting it under 1350, you know, something like that, maybe even 13, and then try to nail a scalp in here. But true backside, in my opinion, is under these levels. And that's even borderline debatable because these guys are not, you know, like, so it's just things like that, man, but it's whatever you're comfortable with and back tested. Again, back, backside is a very general term. Frontside is a little bit more specific because there's kind of no man's land, right? Like if this is trading here at 390 or four, it's kind of a no man's land. It's a broken trend, but how much broken, you know what I mean? So how broken is the trend? It's, that's why go by death lines. That's your best bet. Go by death lines is the easiest strategy in my opinion. And that is, that's a lot of information today. Fuck. I'm kind of winded. I may have to wrap it up, guys. I'm going to, I'm not having anything to talk about next week, man. I'm getting too much information in one day. I need to give you guys some information next week. I'm kidding, of course, but there's always something to talk about. I could talk all day, every day. No, great questions, man. Great questions. Um, let's see. Uh, I'll, how about one more question? Does anybody have like one final question? We'll wrap this up because, uh, I get a lot of stuff out today, a lot of good stuff. I, I, I've been talking for an hour and a half. I'm super wiped out. Um, and I hope you, oh, so check this out, guys, just for any of those who didn't see. Uh, sign up for our webinar page right here. Uh, put in your information. You'll get access to this really sick webinar we put together. Anybody who is not a part of MIC yet, guys, this is just the link you want. You can write this down right now. Um, go to this link, and uh, you'll see it. And then sign up. And, uh, you know, w just check out this really cool webinar. So right here. Uh, Let's see, copy link. I'll, put, I'll post it one more time for anybody who's not a member. You know, go to this link right here and, uh, and check this out. And also, if you have any questions, Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Reach out to us. Uh, actually, let me show you. If we're done talking about charting, guys, let me show you our contact page real quick so you guys have access to everything. Um, and, then, and then I'll show you one other thing. So, guys, also click this link right here. This is really cool on all of our YouTube videos. Uh, type in this link, uh, HTTPS, uh, obviously, colon slash slash www.alextamiz.co, and you'll get access to a 30 minute beginner's course for trading, especially if you're brand new. It's really freaking cool, guys. Seriously, click this link, go to this link, and also go to, uh, go to this link too, as well. So type that in. And then, uh, how to contact. So, um, again, you know, MIC is a family, man. We're a brotherhood. We're always helping each other. We're going above and beyond for our members. Uh, if you are not a part and you want to reach us, Twitter at my investing club, Instagram, the same, uh, Alex, Alex underscore to Miz, uh, AT09 underscore trader for, uh, Twitter. Um, uh, Instagram for bow is modern underscore rock. Same as Twitter. Mine is touch at my club.com for contact. T Bradley 90 for Twitter and uh, for Instagram. If you want to follow my, my drives around and stories, uh, T Bradley 90 underscore trader DM us in chat. Do not be sky. Do not be shy. Schedule calls. Um, again, man, I'd love to meet you guys. I'd love to get some new members and help you guys out. If you need help, and it's all about cutting the learning curve down, man. And short those piggies, man, those freaking squealing stuck fat piggies. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to kick out of here. You guys were great. Thanks a lot, man. Tom, what's up? Always fun.
Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T-O-S-H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.